Hello students, welcome again. Students, in today's video lecture, we want to understand Alexander Pope's contribution to English poetry during the 18th century. Okay, you know many times we consider Alexander Pope as the most representative poet of the 18th century. I have prepared a separate video on that topic but today here we are going to consider this particular point whether Alexander Pope was a true poet or not because this has been a great controversy among several critics of the 18th and 19th century. You know there was a controversy whether we should consider Alexander Pope as a poet or not. Okay, so that is the point of discussion. In our next video lecture, we will discuss uh, Alexander Pope's contribution to English poetry and the different characteristics of his poetry and we will try to interpret Alexander Pope as an important poet in detail in our next video lecture. But today, you know, let me tell you that John Dryden has rightly said that every age has one genius who represents his own period. Okay, say for example, if you talk about the beginning of the 20th century, we have T.S. Eliot who becomes the genius of the age. If you talk about restoration period, we have John Dryden who is the genius of his age, who represents the spirit of his age in his works, in his poetry and drama. In the same manner, if we talk about the first half of the 18th century, which is also known as the age of Alexander Pope, you know, it was during this period that Alexander Pope has represented the spirit of his age in all his works throughout his lifetime. And that's why, you know, various critics consider him as an important representative poet of the 18th century, just like we have Geoffrey Chaucer as the representative poet of the 14th century. Okay, so Alexander Pope was indeed a great poet. Undoubtedly we can say that. Why? Because these are some of his important works. As you can see on the screen, an essay on criticism published in 1711, The Rape of the Lock in 1712 and 14, The Dunciard and an essay on man. Apart from these four, you know, Alexander Pope has written several very uh, fantastic poems, short poems, uh, which appeal the mind and heart of the readers. One important fact about Alexander Pope is that he started writing poetry even when he was still 12 years old. You just imagine a 12 years old boy starts writing poetry. Okay, so he was not a common, he was not an ordinary man, he was indeed a great poet. But, you know, if you read the history of English literature, if you read the critical history of English literature, there and when we talk about Alexander Pope, there you find this controversy. Okay, ever since we find romantic movement during the 19th century. That means, you know, just after Alexander Pope, if we talk about the times of William Wordsworth, Astrid Coleridge, John Keats, P.B. Shelley, you, the period of Romantic Revival, okay, uh, from that time onwards, you know, this controversy came into existence and people started asking a question, was Alexander Pope a real poet? Okay, so Pope's place among his contemporaries has been a matter of great controversy which we are going to discuss 
in today's lecture. There are uh, some critics who are in favor of Pope as a poet and at the same time there are some other poet, other critics who are against Alexander Pope. Okay, so let's begin uh, to have a look at different views presented by these different critiques. Okay, Wharton, W A R T O N. Wharton was among those you know who went against Alexander Pope. He was actually the first critic who said who raised this question that was Alexander Pope a true poet. Okay, uh, Wharton asked this because you know the largest portion of Pope's poetry according to him is didactic. Didactic means moral, it always teaches just like philosophy. Okay, so he considers his poetry as didactic or moral or sometimes satirical and consequently not of the most poetic species of poetry. According to Wart Wharton, you know, true poetry does not teach, does not aim to teach anything. True poetry does not aim at satirizing uh, the society. Okay, true poetry must have the elements of imagination, emotions, it must appeal our heart. So, if you consider this, this criteria, then Alexander Pope was not at all a poet. Okay, apart from uh, uh, Wharton, there are some other critics like Leslie Stephen. Okay, Leslie Stephen, you can read these lines in red color. He said that much of Pope's work may be fairly described as rhymed prose. Now, you know, he considers Pope's poetry as prose, rhymed prose, okay, a prose with little use of rhyme and meter, not in substance or tone of feeling. He says that Pope's poetry misses the substance of feeling, okay, but only in the form of expression. So, uh, lastly, Stephen also goes with Wharton and says that he was actually not a poet. That is a doubtful uh, statement. Now, uh, Matthew Arnold during the 19th century, that means during the Victorian era, he also concluded when he examined Pope's poetry, he came to this conclusion as you can see on the screen. He said that John Dryden and Alexander Pope are not the classics of our poetry. The classics means great personalities. They are not the great personalities of our English poetry. They are the classics of our prose. Okay. So, Arnold also goes to the extent of saying that no doubt Pope was a great personality, a great figure, a literary figure, but in the field of prose, not poetry. So, these are some of the critics whom I have taken here, but uh, let me uh, introduce you to some other critics who are speaking in favor of Alexander Pope as a poet. They are uh, uh, Jonathan Swift, Joseph Edison, Dr. Samuel Johnson and so many others during the 18th and 19th century. These critics have tried to defend Alexander Pope as the greatest poet of his times during the 18th century. Okay, Dr. Samuel Johnson, in fact, he places Alexander Pope on the highest pedestal and in his lives of the poet. You know, Dr. Johnson is known by his very important critical works, uh, work Lives of the Poet. There, he has said this line, if Pope be not a poet, where is poetry to be found? Okay, so was Pope a poet? To this, he asks a question to those critics who are against Alexander Pope and he says that if Pope is not a poet, then where is poetry? Okay, so he argued that a critic 
restricts himself to his own limited definition of poetry and tries to examine someone's poetry by those norms and okay that is the fault of the critic that is not the fault of the poet uh, mactill is an another critic who again joins hands with dr samuel johnson and he also appreciates pope as an important poet mactill says that pope gave to his age the kind of poetry it needed and at the same time we have voltaire voltaire an important critic also appreciates alexander pop by saying that mr pop is the best poet of england and at present of all the world okay lord byron now byron himself was a renowned poet he himself was a great poet he also appreciates alexander pop and says that as to pop i have always regarded him as the greatest name in our poetry so he considers uh, the name of alexander pop as the greatest depend upon it the rest are barbarians so he wants he is very harsh in his statement and he says that you agree with this and if you don't agree with this you are the barbarians you are the uncivilized uncultured people if you do not accept this view which view that alexander pop is the greatest poet of all times professor sainsbury also defends pop as uh, by saying that that to deny poetry to pop is absurd absurd means meaningless okay so sainsbury says that when you say that it is not poetry you are uh, you are saying something meaningless you are saying something absurd now the question that comes to our mind why these critics some of the critics like wharton uh lastly stephen why did they not accept pope as a poet okay to understand this you know let me tell you that it, it it all depends upon how you understand poetry how you define poetry if you think that a uh, high emotions okay imagination and lyrical poetry uh, too much of romanticism lofty sentiment if if all these things make poetry then you can say that pope was not a poet why because all these things are missing in alexander pop's poetical works okay so if you consider uh, these emo- use of imagination use of emotions high sentiments lofty sentiments uh, lyrical qualities romanticism uh, like 19th century poets like wordsworth coleridge shelley keats okay if you compare pope with these uh, romantic poets then you may believe that he was not a poet okay but that is a wrong judgment you should try to evaluate a poet considering the scenario of his times remember alexander pop was living during the 18th century and 18th century was the period of classicism where there is much restraint there is much emphasis on restraint and order there is no romanticism and moreover 18th century was the age of reason was the, was the age of prose where prose literature was more popular during his times and where intellect is is given more important importance than emotions okay so 18th century literature appeals our intellect appeals our thoughts not our emotions okay pop's poetry should not be judged by the parameters of romantic poets okay uh, he may be termed as the greatest poet of his times by considering these five points number 1 his poetry is universal how do you call a poet a great poet by considering whether he has been read well read 
in all countries in all times if yes you can you can say that his poetry is true poetry so alexander pop is a universal poet undoubtedly we can say that why because you see alexander pop has been taught in all universities not only in india everywhere around the world his poetry is universal number 2 he has used satire as a weapon satire means kataks okay he has used satire as a weapon to laugh at the mankind to laugh at the follies or weaknesses of mankind okay so he has used satire as a poetical techniques in his poetry number 3 you know uh, regarding the use of language also you should remember just like william shakespeare and just like bacon he has imparted he has contributed to the development of language also there are you know lot many lines uh, which we can take from his poetry which have become immortal lines in our day to day conversation now these are some examples a little learning is a dangerous thing to err is human to forgive divine okay fools rush in where angels fear to tread the proper study of mankind is man an honest man is the noblest work of god these are these lines have become so popular among the people you know and these lines have been taken from alexander pop's poetical works so how can you say that alexander pop was not a good poet okay number 4 pop is also a great painter of his age as geoffrey chaucer was a great painter of the 14th century okay in terms of minute presentation detailed uh, picturization visualization and realistic representation of the people of his times no one can excel him uh, during the 18th century and that's why he became the representative poet of the 18th century number 5 you know pope was also a master of using heroic couplets you know how successfully how beautifully how artistically alexander pop has used heroic couplets to express his thoughts his intellectual ideas in his poetry and that makes him as the master of using heroic couplets and this use of heroic couplets bring proper balance order and rationality in his poetry that makes him a great poet so uh, let's conclude our discussion by saying that alexander pop was not an ordinary poet he was a great poet but not in the popular romantic sense okay if you if you try to examine uh, pop's poetry from the uh, from romantic sense like uh, wordsworth coleridge uh, he is not the poet of that category okay alexander pop was altogether a different kind of poet okay he was a staunch follower of classicism as i told you in the beginning and that's why he maintains proper balance proper order proper rationality and intellectualism in his poetry he was not a lover of nature just like william wordsworth okay so he never romanticized the ideas in his poetry he presented the thoughts in his hard uh, crude uh, nature crude forms right he was a man of reason a man of intellect and he was a poet who gives realistic representation of the social and political weaknesses of the people and of the society during his times and that's why he is considered as a representative poet of his age uh, last remember this line some critic has said this things that pop's first and most important claim to greatness is the fact that he is preeminently 
the poet of his age okay uh, in, in our next video lecture i am going to discuss alexander pops uh, his po the important characteristics of his poetry in the next video so till then goodbye and wish you have a nice time and please do share this video among your friends and classmates thank you for watching thank you